By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I bring you the final match that I have played in the online Dutch old school league, aka Odol. This is match number five. So far I've played Jun Erik, Florian, Daniel, Robert, and now I am playing Marius. And Marius is one of the four players that I've met in this tournament that's actually from Norway. So there must be a great old school scene out there. And another interesting fact, he is also bringing an Underworld Dreams deck to the table and again it's built completely different we've already seen a green and black uh, underworld dreams deck i believe a black underworld dreams deck a red and black underworld dreams deck and now we're going to see red white and black all tucked together in this underworld dreams shell so um, i'm curious to see how this will end up in a moment i'm going to go to the deck text discussing my deck and my opponent's deck marius if you want to sk skip that, you can check out the description below and there you will find different timestamps. One of those timestamps says MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. Now here we are going to start with the deck deck. I'm going to start with my own deck, Timmy's Spellbook. Let's take a look. Okay, so here it is again, Timmy's Spellbook. So my mono blue deck. I really enjoy playing this deck and taking it to tournaments like this Online Dutch League. Um, every time I'm learning and every time I'm tweaking and every time I'm changing, I'm, I already have a few things in the back of my head to change. So far, I've only lost one match. It was a brutal match, though. It was against Florian. So if you haven't seen that, there's probably a link popping up right now. It was it was brutal. But if you want to take a look at that, Carnage, be my guest. Um, so overall, this deck is performing quite well. Um, if you really want to have an extensive deck deck, then I would advise you to go to the first match that I've played in this campaign that was against Jun Erik, so match one of Odo, and there I really go into this deck and discuss the ins and outs. So if you're curious about that, I advise you to go back to that match. There's actually a whole Odo playlist where you can find all the games, um, and I believe there's a link to that in the comments below. Okay, so this is my deck photo. Take a look, that's all I'm gonna say about it, and let's continue to this new interesting deck that we're gonna look, look at. Uh, Dreams Combo by Marius. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck by Marius Combo Dreams. And uh, it's quite interesting if you're a fan of Underworld Dreams, Timmy Talks is the place to be, I guess, because this is the third or the fourth deck in Odol that I'm facing that is, I guess, built around Underworld Dreams, although this deck only has three Underworld Dreams. For the, so for the people that have forgotten what it does, it's an enchantment from Black, three black to cast and it says every time your opponent draws a card he or she gets a damage right so that means that you want your opponent to draw a lot of cards hence the winds of change in this deck right and of course the wheel of fortune as well so he's going to try to force me to draw into a lot of cards at the same time he wants me to make sure that i cannot do a lot with those cards so he's playing with armageddon's so armageddon in there to kind of lock my board state and of course addition chance to maybe destroy my mana rocks then he also plays with black vice that goes very well with that particular strategy now interesting here as well is we see a lot of text edge components in this deck and of course, we're seeing those four land tags in this brew and the three Armageddon. So that is definitely a big theme. Another thing we see in this deck is it is creatureless. He's playing with two Wrath of Gods and an Abyss to kind of destroy all the creatures. So what he wants to do is just destroy my creatures, uh, make sure that I don't have any lands. At the same time, he is drawing lands from his land tags and gaining life because he's also playing with two Ivory Towers. And that buys him the time he needs to play his Underworld Dreams and kind of kill me on my own draw and possibly using Black Vices and Lightning Bolts to kind of speed up that process. So it is an interesting uh, mix, this deck, between an Underworld Dreams deck that we know, kind of the classic deck for me would be a red-black Underworld Dreams with the blue Power Splash making it more powerful. But in this case, we're seeing a mix between that and uh, the Tex Edge deck with the biggest difference that there is no Lance Edge in this deck. So that is a nice difference. He really wants to kill me with kind of that Underworld Dreams Black Vice idea, kind of locking me out um, to play anything with the Armageddon's. And then, like I said before, the Wrath of Gods and I guess the Abyss to kind of make sure that any creature that I may be able to put out in between that he kills that. 
Um, I just want to give a shout out here to the Jade Statues, the two Jade Statues in this deck. I think Jade Statue is a wonderful creature and I have to admit, I have a play set of Jade Statues and I hardly ever play it, unfortunately. I need to play it more. And this has this classical combo between Jade Statue and Wrath of God. So Jade Statue is an artifact, but you can pay two to turn it into a 3-6 creature until end of turn. So the cool thing is you can turn it into a creature and at the end of turn it turns back to an artifact again and then you can play your Wrath of God or you can say I'm going to play my Wrath of God, kill all the creatures on the board and then I'm going to attack him with my Jade Statue because I'm going to turn it into a creature. So Jade Statue, Wrath of God is this classical combo and yeah, it's really nice to see it in a deck. So thank you Marius for bringing that little synergy, that little combo to the table today. Hopefully, we get to see it in action. Let's go to the games. Game number one is about to start, and I believe I've just taken a mulligan here. Let's see, yeah, putting a card on the bottom there. So I'm sitting on the left, of course, with the Timmy playmat, my opponent with that very cool kick-ass playmat, Marius sitting on the right, and starting off with a Tolaria and finding a Mox Sapphire, so that's pretty good. But of course, I'm already down to five cards. That's a bit of a downside here. And uh, passing turn to my opponent. Seems like we're chatting a little bit. And there we see Marius drawing his first card for his first turn. Let's see what he can do here. A little bit in the tank, having a lot of options. And there we see a Mox Jet, Mox Ruby. That looks like a great start for him, probably followed by a land, right? Or did he keep a no-lander? No, there's a City of Brass. Oh, look at this opening. Demonic Tutor. And now I'm afraid because I'm playing against Black and maybe he's looking up my favorite card in the game of Magic, Mind Twist, and he's going to twist me next turn. Luckily, of course, I do have two blue open. And the question is always, are you going to counter the Demonic Tutor or are you going to say, you know what, I'll let you look up whatever you're looking up and I will just keep two blue open. Or maybe I don't even have a counter spell, of course. That's the other option. I have seen, okay, okay, he's going to do something. Let's see what he's going to do. Dark Ritual into an Underworld Dreams. And here we possibly see the counter spell. No, we don't. Okay, then I'm going to 19. No counter spell for me. Tapping three here. Playing a Prodigal Sorcerer, okay. Hey, it's a Timmy, it's something, but it's not looking great for me with that early Underworld Dreams. And I wonder if that is the card that Matty has looked up with his Demonic Tutor. Possibly he did. Ooh, Lightning Bolt on the Timmy here. Timmy is going to die. It's not a good day to be a Tim. Tapping a City, going to 18. And what is he going to play? Winds of Change. And that means damage because of that Underworld Dreams. I believe, how many cards do they have in hand? Three or four. I started shuffling so quickly I couldn't see, but we'll just see when we look at the amount of damage that I'll take. I'm on 19 now. I'm drawing three cards. I'm going to go to 16. And this is exactly what Matias wants to do. Really get an early Underworld Dreams out, kind of, you know, forcing... Me to take a lot of damage early on and you know my deck is kind of slow finding another Tim and finding an island okay but that means I can't counter I guess I kind of left the counter tactics for uh, for this game <laughs> the thing is when you're when you're behind on the board uh, counter magic is not great when you're ahead on the board it's great let's take a look here what Marius can do if he can maybe find a third swamp and play another underworld dreams and he's just passing turn this is lucky for me he's kind of giving me a free turn of course i have to take a damage from the dreams but he's giving me an option to get back and here i can do that trick again with the mace of if attacking and then untapping it with the mace finding a jaloom tome uh, sorry a jam day tome of course jaloom is the little book this is the big one that will allow me to draw into more cards. And I'm just really hoping that Marius is not finding any gas here. There is a Felden's Cane followed by a Balance. That means I'm going to lose my Tim. But you know what? Things could, could be worse. I'm only losing a Tim to this Balance. I'm not really upset about that. Could still ping him for one. 
The problem, of course, is, oh, I'm losing a lot of lands too. Okay, I kind of missed that department. That is a problem. <laughs> well done, Marius. What I wanted to say is the problem is I'm taking a damage, of course, every time I'm using my book to draw a card because of that Underworld Dreams. And Underworld Dreams is such a good tactic in that perspective. Oh, look at this, Armageddon! Armageddon, ay, ay, ay. This is looking very good for Marius here. He's really trying to lock the game, and I'm slowly dying on that Underworld Dreams. And remember, it has been in play since turn one of Marius, right? So it's been there for a long time. Look at my life total already on 10. Finding another Tim. I believe this is Tim number three hitting the board here. But Timmy's alone are not going to win this game for me. What can I do to actually get rid of this Underworld Dreams? I believe I only have a Chaos Orb to do that. My hand is pretty much empty. This is looking very good for Matthias here. Drawing a card, going to eight. Pinging him here for one, so he's going to go to 14. I'm going to drop to seven. Draw another card, going to go to six. Finding a Mistress Factory, so I'm able to at least get something on the board. But remember, I'm on six here. If he has, for example, a Winds of Change, I get two more damage. If he has a Wheel of Fortune, by the way, I'm dead. I'm five life right now. Attack him for two, going to go to 11. Play another Island. Play a ghost ship. Okay, okay. I guess we're getting there, but he's on 11. I'm on 5. I've got 5 turns left. If Marius finds a way for me to draw some extra cards, I'm toast. What does he have in his hand? He's just passing turn. Ping him for 1. He's going to drop to 10. Going to go to 4. I can attack him here for 5 in total. Well, 4 in total, I guess. Timmy keeping it untapped. Passing turn. Don't want to use the book anymore. There's the Abyss. Can ping him for one with the Tim. Wow, what a timing. Untap, upkeep, ping him for one, and then it dies to the Abyss. So stack it in a way that I can do that. That means he's going to four, and I think I can make this. I'm on three now. Does he have a lightning bolt? No, he does not. Ooh, unbelievable. I did not expect to take this game after that. Rapid, rapid start for Marius. And Marius, it looked like you did everything right, but at a certain point in the game, you couldn't find any useful draws anymore and it just gave me the little space I needed to take this first game down. So we are going to dive into our sideboards and we'll catch back up to you in game number two. Game number two and my opponent Marius is going to be on the play after losing that first game. Let's see what the sideboards change. I guess since I'm playing against a red deck again, I'm going to see that red Elemental Blast. So that probably means that I board in some blue Elemental Blasts as well. Look at that. Marius has to take a Mulligan here. I took a Mulligan in game one, went down to six, and now it's Marius' turn to go down to six as well. Let's hope for him. He doesn't have to go down to five. I do think that the London Mulligan rule like creates less non-games. Um, you have a better chance of getting a quality hand after taking your first mole and definitely after taking your second one. In my experience, it's a better Mulligan rule. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think, by the way. So he's going to draw his seven. Remember, he has to, to choose if he wants to keep it. If he wants to keep it, that's a decision first. And then he has to choose a card that he puts on the bottom of his library. Putting a card down there. And it looks like we are about to begin grabbing my cards as well. Game number two, basic planes into a vice. That means three quick damage for me going down to 17. And that vice could do some work against my deck because I don't have a quick deck. And look at that, deciding to play a workshop. That is interesting because with my mono blue, I usually want to just have an island island so I can counter, choosing not to, and actually using a copy artifact to copy his vice just to empty my hand here. Remember, you know, we didn't see any lightning bolts in game one, but it doesn't mean, or actually we saw one lightning bolt here. Here you go. There are the bolts. When you're playing against a deck that's red, it has lightning bolts in it, and you just have to be very careful with your life total. So dropping down to nine already, and this is turn number three, so it's going very well for Matthias. Although he is running out of gas, I think, also after that uh, mulligan, of course, going down to six cards. 
stripping his Badlands here. And that's all that I can do, really, showing him the amount of cards I have in hand. Six, that means that I'm at least going to take two more damage. There's a Loa from Marius finding a Mox Sapphire. Ooh, and this is great. Now I can really empty my hand. Look at that. I'm going from six to four cards in one single turn. That was an Island, a Mox, and an Icy Manipulator. This is great news for me. It looks like I'm stabilizing at seven here. And now I can keep my counter magic up. Hopefully, playing a factory going to swing in here. Or not. Yes, I'm going to swing in here for two. There is a Swords to Plows here. It's not too bad, actually. It's going to bring me back to nine. And in his turn, I'm going to tap down his red source and let him draw. And this is such a great thing about the Icy Manipulator. The versatility of being able to tap a land, tap an artifact, and tap a creature. It's just an amazing card when you kind of want to play that control game. Tapping four here, another Icy Manipulator. Looks like I'm slowly taking over control. I am tapping down to Ruby. I'm still pretty much... I'm more afraid of direct damage at this point than of a disenchant. Because I have two Icy's as well. Gonna play another one. Gonna attack for two here. Probably gonna keep two mana open for the Icy's. And gonna tap down both of his mocks in here. And it was looking really good for Matthias, but now he's kind of losing control again. He manages to get me down on live very quickly, but then it kind of stops. Attacking him again here with the 2-2. That means he's gonna drop to 16. And I'm going to tap down his lands. And maybe I'm going to get to a point where Marius has so many cards in hand that the Black Vice that I copied at the start of the game will become relevant. I don't think it will, but who knows, you know? Weirder things have happened in a game of Magic. Passing Tyranny, of course, still tapping down the Moxen. And remember, Marius is playing with three colors. Ooh, this is an important draw for him, land tax. This is a good draw because he's playing with three colors and he only has access to white at the moment. So that must be very difficult for him. Finding a Library of Alexandria. And here we go, playing a copy artifact on my Mishra's factory. That means it's now a 2-2. Two -two. Or actually, it's a land. And I'm attacking it and tapping it immediately to give 3-3 three, three to my Mishra's factory, dealing three damage here. That means he's going to go to 12, tapping down his Moxen again. I'm doing that in his upkeep. So untap, upkeep, and then I'm tapping down his Moxen. And here we see a red Elemental Blast on the copy artifact. Now, this is interesting. He made this play, and then we had this conversation where I said, well, I'm not sure if you can actually play a red Elemental Blast on copy artifact. And I think we both weren't sure at this point. Um, the reason of this is that when you copy a target, it also copies the color. In this case, it's a land, so that means it's colorless. So copy artifact is no longer blue. If that is the case, so we're now right now checking it, if that is the case, then he cannot red elemental blast it. And uh, yeah, we're also drinking beer, but we're also copying this. It's, uh, so we're, we're gonna look at the rules, and we looked it up, and I, I remember this. I believe the conclusion was that because Copy Artifact copies the color, it's no longer blue, so the Red Elemental Blast doesn't work. Of course, you can still use it to counter a blue spell, so counter the Copy Artifact when it comes into play, but you can't use it to, um, to destroy the Copy Artifact. So uh, that's basically the conclusion we're working towards. In the meanwhile, Marius has also used his land tax to dig up another red source. And let's see, it looks like we're still kind of discussing it right now. And I think what's going to happen is we'll see Copy Artifact return to the battlefield in a moment. Coming to that conclusion that we actually, that you actually cannot play a Red Elemental Blast on the Copy Artifact. It's quite interesting because it is a blue card. It's so blue, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it makes sense. And in a way, copying Mishra's Factory is just a whole weird situation because what's happening is you're turning the Mishra's Factory into a 2-2 creature, turning it into an artifact. That means that you can play a copy artifact and copy the artifact, but you're actually, when it's then copied, it is just a Mishra's Factory. It is a land, it's not a factory worker. So that's also why you saw me in the previous turn attacking with the 2-2 and using my copy artifact that you just played to pump 
the factory work. Okay, here we go. Look like I did a little bit of cutting there. So here we see the copy artifact that's in play. That means that my opponent still has the red elemental blast. And of course, I know of the red elemental blast now. So that's kind of my advantage in this whole scenario. Um, and he used the land text to dig up another mountain, playing the mountain right now. He's on 11, I am on 9. And remember, one of those copy artifacts is a black vice, that's an untapped one. Ooh, winds of change. Not countering it, and the other copy artifact is the Mishra's factory. Interesting here. This game is not yet over, of course. I mean, Marius still has 11 life. He has an active land tax. So there are definitely options for him. You would think when you're looking at Marius board state and you see, hey, he's got a land tax and he's got um, a Library of Alexandria. That's fantastic. But of course, I have a Black Vice as well. So that can bite him also to try to get his seven with his hand. So that's the reason why he's not doing that here. Casting a Soul Ring. I believe there are three cards in hand there. He's passing turn. And let's take a look. I have some control back, I guess, or all the control, you could say, having the double IC and, of course, counter capability, a lot of mana. This is kind of the game I want to play. And then I'm still on nine, so things are looking fairly good for me. Tapping his planes here so he cannot play a Swords or a Disenchant and deciding to deal four damage. This is kind of an interesting decision here that I'm making using the IC Manipulator already. I'm kind of telling him, you know, I don't think that you have, or I don't think that really tapping down two of your mana sources at this point in the game has a huge impact. Uh, I am tapping his mountain down here that he doesn't have double red. I don't think that's very relevant, so it's quite an interesting decision, but I think the decision to tap down his planes, making sure that my... Both of my Mistress Factories survived in a way. It could signal my opponent as well that I don't have a Counterspell in hand. On the other hand, maybe um, I'm tapping down his White Source because I simply don't want him... Uh, I simply don't want to waste a Counterspell on removal on my Factories at this point in the game. Uh, he is on 7. He's looking up some lands with his Land Tax. And um, it looks like he's got quite a lot of cards in hand now. He has to be worried about the Black Vice that I still have as well. So I'm curious to see what he's going to do. I mean, if he just can find some disenchants to play when I attack with the factories, that would help. Taking a damage from City of Brass means he's going to 6 playing Dark Ritual. Is he going to play Underworld Dreams here? Okay, Demonic Tutor, having one black still in his mana pool, playing a Demonic Tutor. Wow, what an interesting game this is. What is he going to look up? This must be difficult here for Marius. It's always difficult when you're under pressure. Like, it's kind of easy to make decisions when your life total is not under pressure like this. And also that City of Brass, remember, I can start tapping down the City of Brass for one damage extra a turn with my IC Manipulator. And yes, I have killed people with that strategy. It does work. You might think, oh, it's only one damage, but it really adds up when a player is already low on life. I mean, one damage with the Brass is one-sixth of his life total at this point. Picking up his card, really curious what it is. Remember, he wants to kind of empty his hand as well, right? Because they have that vice on the board and he's on six. I have two Mistress Factories, so I can attack him for four next turn. Three cards in hand. He must be worried as well, thinking, is he going to counter again? Just like last time, remember game one where he played Dark Ritual into Demonic, or Demonic into Ritual into Underworld Dreams. There it is. There is an Armageddon cast. And there is... A counter spell. Mana drain. This is bad news here for my opponent. I'm also getting four extra mana next turn. And do we see a balance? We do see a balance here. I've got two cards in hand. Looks like he's got two cards in hand as well. And now we've got to look at the land count. I've got quite a lot of lands. My opponent has four lands in total. 
throwing away a lot of islands there. But at this point in the game, I don't really care much for that. I mean, it's not ideal, but I still have my two Mishra's factories open. I have four extra mana because of that mana drain. I can use two of those to animate both of my factories. I can use two of those to play... Oh, not even a Tim. Going to play a Psyblast. Oh, that's it. That's it. With the Psyblast, he's going to go to four. Uh, to two, I, I, I mean. And then he's going to get... The final blow with the Mishra's factories. Okay, that was enough. I think that that counter spell was uh, was crucial there with the mana drain. And uh, wow, that's it. That's the game. So another victory here for me um, in the online Dutch old school league. I would like to thank all my opponents um, who I played against. It was great fun to play with you guys. I'm looking forward to join this league again as uh, soon i believe it's every month if you want to join odol as well you can check the description below there's a link to the facebook page and you can sign up there i would also like to thank hank for organizing this great great event he's all doing it out of the love for the game and i so so respect that you can find hank on instagram hw underscore mtg i would like to thank you for watching and if you want to support the channel you can do that by leaving a simple like Leave me a comment, tell me what you think of this game, of the whole uh, league that I joined in. If you missed the game, by the way, you can also find uh, the link to the playlist. I'm sure it's in the comments below. Um, another thing you can do is you can support the channel financially. You can become a patron of Timmy Talks and join all the fun. And uh, you can do that by clicking on the link that's appearing right now. Click on that card and that will take you to the Patreon page where you will see exactly what you can do to join the Timmy team. It's only a dollar a month. Well, it starts from a dollar a month. You can support me for more if you want to. Um, and I'd like to thank all my supporters because they are helping me to keep Timmy Talks afloat. Talking about the supporters of the channel. Let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at all the fantastic, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als fik het als somba kan zien.